Well, Kent won the toss. They decided to take the football. So we'll get a good look at that Alabama defense that Kirby Smart told us yesterday. I said, what are your expectations? Because everybody else has placed them on this defense. What are your expectations? And he says, I hope we're the best defense that ever played at Alabama. Yeah, and as well, you know what else? You got to still wait on the quarterback. Quarterback still waiting. A.J. McCarron has waited a long time. He's got to wait at least a couple series of down. Cade Foster will kick off after he rake sets the football. Mid-range and short field goals for the Crimson Tide, the same duo that worked for Coach Saban a year ago. So here we go. Looks like we're set for some football. Eric Adiemi will field it and take it out. Adiemi to the 10-yard line, the former Kentucky Wildcat. Picks up 12 on that return, and that is where the Golden Flashes will have the first football to start this game. Now the interception ratio, only eight TDs with 12 interceptions a year ago. Single setback. Jaquise Terry will get the opening handoff. Tries to work that left side and got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Our starting lineups are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't. A good one. Terry goes in motion. Pressure, quick slant passes in and out of the hands of the intended target, Matt Hurdle. Alabama defense said they will, they will base out of the 3-4. Jesse Williams, Chapman, and Square up front. The linebacking core, very talented, very solid, of course, led by Dante Hightower. They'll rotate five or six guys in that group. And in the back end, Mark Barron, the senior out of Mobile, Alabama, All-American caliber player, a leader, not just in the secondary, but of this team as well. Hightower on third down as Alabama brings in their dime package. Third and ten for the Golden Flashes. Pass is dropped. Would have been right on the first down line, but Hurdle couldn't hang on to it, and so it's a three and out for Kent State. All right, you got to help your quarterback, especially early on the road. And that's the second drop of the game for Matt Hurdle. And he's their vertical threat. They've been right at, right at that first down marker, but you're talking. Tripped up by Kyle Reese. A.J. McCarron, Andre, gets the start by virtue of being a sophomore, beating out the redshirt freshman, 6'4, 205. He will work the first three series this afternoon and then turn it over to Phillip Sims. And the tide will start with a couple of tight ends. Out of the pistol formation, handoff goes to Richardson. Gain of three. Lee Stalker, the defensive end, brings him down. Take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups for Alabama offensively. Of course, we've talked about Richardson. DeAndre White, a chance for him to shine with Darius Hanks out for a couple of games. And Deron Carter, probably not going to see any action today. Up front, this is a very experienced offensive line led by Barrett Jones, William Vallejos, DJ Fluker, 335 pounds, anchors the right tackle spot as well. McCarron, quick hitter. Pass is caught. DeAndre White on the reception inside the 30. That's a the missed tackle by Josh Pleasant allows for the first down by DeAndre White. First and goal, Crimson Tide. Out of the eye formation. Richardson. Stuffed. No gain on the play. Luke Batten from the middle linebacker position came flying in to trip up Richardson. Luke Batten had 68 tackles a year ago. Good, solid football player for Kent State. Take a look at our red zone brought to you by Haviland. The Crimson Tide last year. Trying to improve on that number. They scored a TD 63% of the time. They'd like to be Closer to 70. Richardson powering his way in. Touchdown, Alabama. J. McCarron. First incomplete pass of the game for McCarron on that last play. Dump it off. 
to Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy to midfield. And then some. Inside the 30, falls forward to the 26, finally tripped up by Josh Pleasant. A gain of 48 yards. All right, two missed Kent State tackles there allowed Eddie Lacy, Big Eddie, to rip off a big one. And this is a guy you usually don't, didn't catch a pass out of the backfield last year, but he was tremendous running the football. Averaged over seven yards a carry, but proving. And hey, toss me the rock out of the backfield. They toss it to Mr. Lacey. Goes airborne. Calvin Tiggle hanging on. We'll get credit for that tackle. Lacey also missing that shoe on that last run. Still able to well pick up 48. Starting to resemble that national championship team even more when Mark Ingram was backed up by Trent Richardson. That one-two punch. And now it's Trent's show where he's the starter. Now Eddie Lacey kind of in the Trent Richardson mold where he's coming in as the second running back. Lacey will stay in. A couple of tight ends in the game. On second down and eight. McCarron over the middle. Looking for a nice touchdown. Alabama 24 yards. What a throw from McCarron. Right in stride. Talk about standing in there and delivering a strike to Marquise Mays. McCarron, heavy pressure from Roosevelt Nix. Kent State's best pass rusher, and he delivers a strike. One after from Jeremy Shelley up and good. Three minutes and 44 seconds left. We're having some clock issues here, so 344 to go in the Opening quarter, Keith, and he's dropped for a loss back at the 12-yard line. Courtney Upshaw along with Daquan Minzy, loss of nine. And one quarterback. Second down. A little draw play. That goes to Murray. Nothing happening there. Just a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third down, and let's... Call it 15, maybe 16. Boy, what a nice, good run stopper. Certainly proved it on that down. Well, a dangerous situation here for Kent State on third and long. Monte Hightower slipping up to the middle of that line of scrimmage. Here he comes. They pick up the blitz. Hightower shakes his man and drops. Spencer Keith just ran right over the offensive lineman. Yeah. Said they knew Marquise Mays, what he could do. They needed to figure out who the other wide receivers were going to be. I'll tell you what, they're getting some answers here early in the first quarter. Sims, a little too strong, looking for the tight end, Brad Smelly. And that may be the final play. You look at Philip Sims, he just doesn't look look rushed. Red shirt freshman. Looks as comfortable as any freshman that I've watched play the position at quarterback. Not rushed, never panics, always under control. And your your unit as an offense, they they feel that and feed from it. Richardson to the right of Philip Sims. Here's Trent. Powers his way. Touchdown. Trent Richardson from nine yards out. His second of the afternoon. Nothing. Nick Saban, of course, facing his alma mater. Getting a nice million dollar paycheck to his former school where he played back in the early 70s. But, you know, there's more to this story than meets the eye as a quartet of guys from Kent State. Ish Kitchen, Lee Stalker, Jacquees Terry, and the quarterback Spencer Keith all came to Tuscaloosa back in late January to help build a house. They got together with some Alabama Crimson Tide players, and stayed around for a weekend, helped build the house, gave clinics to some of the kids that uh, were displaced because of the tornado. And, you know, it's uh, the tornado has had such an impact on this community. And I tell you what, it's had an impact on this Alabama football team. And Nick Saban 
has stressed to his guys over and over again there's more to life than just football and he has uh, he has gone out and dedicated so much of his time and the players time to help rebuild this community I mean uh, the effort is one thing on the practice field Andre but the effort they have put forth in this community has really been astonishing yeah it's a close knit community it was already and then after the, the tornado certainly they are a definitely closer knit community than uh, even before. Well, here's Sims on second down, hit from behind, loose football. Who's got it? I think Alabama comes back to get it. Over Kent State. On April 27th, a devastating tornado ripped through the college town of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The tornado claimed the lives of six University of Alabama students. And as Tom Rinaldi tells us, it forever changed the life of one Alabama football player. In a place defined by the tide, it will be a day forever scarred by the wind. Not measured in miles per hour, but in moments and lives. Those touched and those taken. There was a tremendous amount of devastation. It was probably the most devastation we've ever witnessed in our lifetime. As soon as we realized the magnitude of what happened, we sort of circled the wagons and said, we need to check on all our players. We need to find out where they are. Is anybody injured? Did anybody lose their home? Are you filming? Yeah. The sea is nasty! The afternoon of April 27th, the deadliest tornado in the history of Alabama tore through Tuscaloosa. Damn it, go back. Carson Tinker, Alabama's starting long snapper, was at home with his two roommates and his girlfriend, Ashley Harrison when they sought shelter in a closet as the twister bore down. I could hear my house falling apart. I mean, we knew the storm was coming, and we, I mean, we got in that closet, but we never saw it. We didn't know how big it was. I mean, we, we could literally hear our house ripping apart. It was pitch black. I couldn't see anything, and you couldn't hear anything besides the noise. The house just started shaking, and then it started breaking apart, and it just went on from there to where just the whole house disintegrated. The last thing I remember is, is I was holding on to Ashley and I was, I was just squeezing her. And then I, I just I just got just pulled out. I mean, just, just like that. And that's, that's the last thing I remember. The wind threw Tinker 100 yards through the sky. He landed in a field across the street, unconscious. I had a uh, concussion. I had s scratches and, and tears all over my body. Uh, a ligament was pulled off the bone in my wrist. And everything is just a, just a blur. The only thing I can remember is, is standing on that field and just yelling for Ashley. Across Alabama, 247 people died in the day's tornadoes. In Tuscaloosa, 50 were killed, including Ashley Harrison. She was 22 years old. You know, I shouldn't be here, you know. I know that, that I'm here for a reason, just like there's a reason that, that Ashley's not here. I think about that every morning when I wake up, that I'm blessed to have this day, and I try to make the best of it. So. As a city strives to mend and its people seek to heal, so has Carson Tinker in his body and his heart. From hospital to rehab, he's worked to recover. Football has helped with team as family. Everybody came and saw me. All my coaches came and saw me. My team came and saw me. And that really helped me get through a lot of things that I had to go through. The presence of his teammates uh, has probably been as much help and support uh, as anything we've tried to do for him. We had a strong brotherhood before everything, but now I feel like, I feel like we're stronger through this. A new season arrives in Tuscaloosa. Carson Tinker is a senior now back in uniform, again on the field. For him and for many, the tide returns, yet the wind remains, swirling and pushing. Right now, I'm trying to get better, you know, every day with, with rehab and get ready for, uh, for the season. I feel like I have a responsibility to, to do what, it, what needs to be accomplished. I mean, in the long run, I'd like to do anything that I can to, to help other people out. That have been through some of the things that I have.
Tom Rinaldi reports.